Hi there, Steve Kaufman here again to talk about language learning. I'm outside because I wanted to get outside. I've been inside doing, you know, working and I said, hey, I can do this outside. I can do it on my iPad. Hopefully this is okay. And uh, also if you enjoy this channel, uh, please subscribe. There's a bell you can tick on so that you can get a notification when a new channel, a new video rather, has been put up. And if you want to learn languages the way I do, please come and visit us at Link. That's where I learn languages. Uh, and any of these videos in English, if you are an English learner, you can import them from YouTube into Link as a lesson. And you'll find the text there. You'll find the video there. You'll find the audio there to download. And hopefully that'll help you. So today I wanted to talk briefly about modal verbs because very often I get asked, you know, how can I get better, more accurate uh, in my use of modal verbs? And we, I get other very specific questions related to aspects of English or other languages. Well, my advice is you can look up, you know, explanations on modal verbs and they may or may not make sense to you because it's not obvious. By the way, a modal verb, for those of you who don't know, those are those verbs like would, could, might, ought to, should, need, have to, anything that implies a need, an obligation, uh, those are considered modal verbs. Would, should, could, as someone once said. And the distinction between when you use one or the, as opposed to another is not always, you know, 100%. Very often you can use one or other of them. Uh, there are obviously lots of explanations, but unless you have had enough exposure to the language, listened enough, read enough, you will never develop a natural ability to use the correct one. And if every time you want to s express this would, should, might, ought to, if you start thinking through those rules, it will inhibit your speaking. So uh, my advice on modal verbs, which is a very sort of, uh, how would you say it, uh, you know, complicated and uh, not obvious very often which one is correct. It's a subtle thing that you have to develop a natural feel for. And reading the explanation can help if you have enough uh, experience with the language, you know, to start with. But uh, mostly it's a matter of getting used to the language. And that is true for many other of these very practical issues. Like people say, well, you know, you always talk about motivation. I want some practical advice on how to improve my English, the practical advice won't help you, the little bits and pieces. And on the other hand, there is an abundance of explanation out there uh, in grammar books, at Google, on all kinds of aspects of using English. That's not the issue. The issue is getting more of it in you so that your brain gradually starts to form these patterns so that you start to naturally use the language accurately. So that's my advice when it comes to modal, M-O-D-A-L, modal verbs. You can look it up, you'll get a bunch of explanation. But if you want to use it correctly, you have to get the habits into your brain. And that means lots of listening and reading, speaking, getting it wrong, thinking you got it wrong when you got it right, and gradually it all just becomes clearer to you. So having an attitude where you accept uncertainty, not fully understanding, possibly making a mistake and not letting that bother you, that's more important than reading any explanation on modal verbs. So thank you for listening. Bye for now.